made this dog that was red with blue ears, or it could be blue with red ears. That part's confusing, I can't remember. But it was a red and blue dog. And something happened where I made an object that had its own life as a three or four year old. And I thought, oh, I never want to stop doing this. And so that just, my hands have been in clay ever since. So I applied to 33 colleges and I have some beautiful rejection letters. <laughs> And, and if you're in the arts, you just better get tough because no one really cares about you. You have to absolutely be committed to what you do no matter what happens outside of you because rejection is just the name of everyday experience. And if you can't handle the rejection, you better get some help because it's just the reality of the arts is you will be rejected over and over and over. Yeah, having a... Uh, Marine Corvette, construction worker, uh, cowboy as a dad, and being an artist was a strange combination. Um, he didn't understand me, I tried to get him, and it was just missing, right? And so I was kind of angry at him for a lot of my life because his judgment of everyone, including me, was you no one measures up. And then before he died, it, it was some, some nice connecting that happened. And then as I, I got older, I began to see him in a clearer way. And one of my favorite authors, Robert Bly, talks about the need to have two rooms for our fathers or our mothers. And, uh, and one for the room is filled with the things that have made a really positive impact on us. And the other room is the things that we struggle with and wrestle with. And to observe them in a way that is helpful, you have to separate them. And so this is called Two Rooms for My Father. Uh, and I wanted to kind of talk about in some visual way that I've been able to separate that. And now I see that he had some great things to offer me. In fact, I see myself, him and me now, in a way that is very positive. But it was not an easy process. Um, uh, artists and their moms and artists and their dads, it's just like the whole history about tension. Um, because when you're an artist, you make decisions that don't make a lot of financial sense. Uh, you make decisions that are kind of confusing because you're seeing the world differently. You know, and, and we see the world as artists uh, in a way that almost makes it seem like we're disconnected from what's important. But what I think we're really connected to what's most important because we're seeing things in a way that is more real, right? In order to draw something, you have to really see it. Uh, and I think it gives us an advantage that is misunderstood by those that don't see things well. And so that was, and also the rust panels. Uh, uh, for me, rust is a, a clock. It's a, a geologic clock slowly taking things that we made back to the earth. And so it's, it's a great clock because I'm never late. I had this notion that this thing we desire in our life, this thing, I, I nicknamed it true home or where we belong or this thing we long for is right back there where you can't reach. It's that thing that you can't, you can't get a hold of it and yet it's with us all the time. And so I was trying to figure out how could I visualize something that is there but we can't reach it, you can't really control it and yet we long for it. Um, and I was very fortunate in 1979 I had an accident and I had a compression fracture of uh, uh, the C7 the vertebrae at the base of my neck and uh, multiple fractures to that vertebrae and they expected me to become a quad. And so I was laying in the hospital for days and they kept waiting for me to lose my arms and my legs. And uh, when you're in those positions, if you touch death's door handle, you have conversations with God that are different than when everything's going well. And so. I learned about limitations even though I don't like them. And so the rod comes out of C7 on the back of the figure. So that's the personal part of it. And then I imagined one birdcage as this feeling of what used to be a home or is it a cage? Is it to protect something or imprison something? And then it just started growing into a year worth of collecting. and antique shop saying, are you a dealer? No, I'm not a dealer. It's gonna be a piece of art, you need to come see it. And this, this thing took over. And so now I'm not even sure 
what all's going on there, except I'm excited about the potential of conversation with the piece. Uh, uh, a lot of people responded to that piece, and I'm not even sure exactly what it's about other than I had to make it. <laughs>